Skylane 759 or Bravo November, uh, turning downwind, and I'm going to extend my downwind a little bit here. I got a little bit too much altitude. Don't worry, friend, you weren't the only one that was a little too high. I was so worried about the mountains that my altitude, speed, and as you're about to see, pattern was completely off. I even spared you guys my horrible radio calls. So as pilots, we all have that one thing that makes us extremely nervous. It could be turbulence, winds, or even IMC. But the one thing that has me running performance numbers over and over is density altitude. And today, we work past my nervousness, but with a healthy level of respect as we head into Big Bear City Airport. Identifier, Lima 35. So quick side story as we do this approach. One day we flew to Apple Valley and as we passed Hesperia, we decided we'd land there on our way back. Density altitude when we passed was 4,000 feet. And then on our way back, I never bothered to rerun the density altitude numbers. I figured it was an hour, couldn't have been that much of a difference. Well, it was. It climbed to 6,200 feet. If there was only a holy crap, we are not climbing as fast as I thought we would, it was that moment. And ever since then, I never lost respect for density altitude. The best lessons are the ones you live through. So we're curious, what kind of lessons have you guys learned in your flying journeys? Big Bear Airport is untowered, and there's one runway, 0826 at 5,850 by 75 feet, and depending on which direction you are departing, they might as well be two different runways. 26 is an approach over pine trees, and if windy enough, the winds push up the trees right as you're near the approach, and you'll feel the updrafts. I had nearly pulled back all the throttle and we were still climbing more entirely. Departure on the other hand is much nicer since it is right over the lake which makes the climb much less nerve wracking. On the other hand, 08 has a beautiful approach but when lining up for the departure and you're staring right at those tall pine trees, you know you better be on your A game. There is a noise abatement procedure for 08 for no straight out departures so you don't overfly the schools by turning left. 10 degrees at the departure end. But I'll be honest, I turn left strictly for self-preservation because there is a gap of clear land away from the trees that takes you directly to Baldwin Lake. Big Bear City Airport has one of the best websites for pilot information. They have approaches and departure animations no matter which direction you're coming from. So definitely study these to make sure you fly the appropriate noise abatement procedures. As always, we'll put a link in the description below. Being the highest airport in SoCal at an elevation of 6,752 feet, it might not be as high as other ones like Telluride, but you'll definitely feel the change in performance on departure. Because even on days with temperatures of 58 degrees, density altitude was still 7,800 feet, which is why most schools require a checkout flight here. It is in the mountains, so the weather is much cooler, and of course, Big Bear is known for its ski resorts. So in the winter, snow is common, but the great thing is YouTube has live Big Bear cameras to let you know real-time conditions. As far as transportation, there are no crew cars, but you don't need them. Big Bear has free transit every day with its trolley system, which is greatly used, which has an airport stop and on weekends, it has direct shuttles to the village, which is where all the restaurants are. We went on a Friday and so the shuttle wasn't running, but with the trolley, it takes about 30 minutes to get to the village. On the way though, it feels like a quick city tour, which was pretty cool. We'll link to the airport website in the description below, which has all the information you need to visit. Big Bear has some of the cheapest fuel anywhere in SoCal but it's kind of a catch 22. More fuel means more weight. I've never actually fueled here. There is an admin building which has the Barnstormer restaurant with a view of the runway, the admin offices with a floor to ceiling sectional, and a pilot's lounge which is nice and quiet. There are restrooms available, just make sure to take a picture of the gate code when exiting the airport so you can get back into the ramp. 
Finally, transient parking spots. Like everything else, the airport website has clear info to know which spots are for what aircrafts. White is single engine transient, green is twin, and yellow is reserved. Whoever's running this website at Big Bear, just amazing job. Unfortunately, they don't have chains, so bring your straps. So in summary, Big Bear is the highest airport in Southern California. It has an amazing pilot information website. Has really cheap fuel. And has free trolleys to get anywhere in Big Bear. Now there are two techniques for departure, flaps or no flaps. I've done both, but I'm more comfortable with no flaps since I want her to be as aerodynamic as possible. But we'd be curious for those who live or visit this airport frequently with a normally aspirated engine because you turbo guys are cheaters. What's your procedure? Do you prefer flaps or no flaps? I'm just kidding about the turbo pilots. I'm just jealous. I don't have one. Can't tell you all how much we've been appreciating all the comments. Once the holiday season is over, we definitely plan to head to some of the airports to meet some of you, which we're excited about. Pretty amazing getting those invites. We're a tiny community here, but to be honest, it blows our mind that in less than a year, it's grown this much. So thank you so much. This is such a scenic departure that we're just gonna let it run this time. But we'll see you guys next week. And as always, until then, go fly, go discover.